Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Nashville Stars franchise. Coming off of the All-Star break, we now head into the second half of the season, about 100 games in, and I am thinking that we still have a shot at competing here for the wild card. I think if we go on a good run, I think we can do something. And I'm not expecting to win a World Series, obviously, but I think it's time to be competitive. I think the one thing that we have struggled with, and I guess that's what it comes with, is just finding depth in the organization. Guys that you can move up or move down or be in the high 70s in AAA. I think we haven't had that luxury yet. And I think that one guy we had to look at here is John Dumont, along with Jacob McCarthy, two young guys. I moved Dumont down to AAA to get him some at-bats. He was our top prospect after season number one. He and Kerry Doss were one and two. But now I moved down to the AAA level to kind of look at them a little bit. And I want Dumont to get some at-bats. Jacob McCarthy was a free agent last season. We signed him to a one-year $500,000 deal. And really, I think the goal was really to have him just as a bench back, a bench bat, a depth guy. And not necessarily a guy that plays the field because he is a terrible fielder. Well, Victor Robles is on the trade block right now, and he's at the AAA with the Norfolk Tides. He hasn't done too well this year, and I think that maybe just a change of scenery will do wonders for him. He grounds out right there. McCarthy comes up here in the bottom of the fifth inning with the bases loaded. These are the type of situations he might be in at the MLB level. Here's a drive to right field. This one's going to be back at the warning track. It bounces off and over the wall for a ground rule double. And that one will be a nice double right there, a two RBI double. And McCarthy is a guy to keep your eye on. I'm not sure what type of role he will have down the stretch, but I'm thinking, you know, we will move him up and see if he gets some at-bats. I'm not going to force any at-bats with him, but he's just a guy that I'm going to kind of put on the bench and see what he does. So at the MLB level, I really need to focus on, you know, a couple of key guys. And I think one of the guys that I want to focus on is Buddha Bless a little bit. He is a depth guy that we moved up last year. He did pretty well. I think middle infield is definitely a position of need, though. And I think that, you know, looking at our outfield, we have a couple of outfield options. So I'm not really too worried. But I think middle infield is a position that we need to be worried about going into the trade deadline. So Victor Robles is on the block. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be moving on from him. It's just a matter of who he will go to at this point. He's under a good contract as well, about $3 million. But speaking of outfield, one guy we added last episode is Billy Hamilton. It took some hard negotiations, to be honest with you. I wanted to give him that one-year $3.2 million deal, but he didn't want that. He wanted multiple years, so I had to actually up that to $5 million in order to get him to sign. So here he is with his first at-bat with Nashville. Like I said, adding to that depth is very, very important, and I think Billy Hamilton can do that. He is older, but still has the good speed. On to the top of the eighth inning. This was just like a weird game versus the Rays. The Rays are that team that is kind of like us. You know, they're not good enough to compete right now for first place, but they're also not good enough to be the worst team or bad enough, I should say. I guess that's not like us because we have been the worst team. But you can just see like games like this are just interesting between the two of us. It seems like all of our games go to extra innings or at least down to the ninth inning with one run. Uh, difference. I mean, this is what it is. And this race, I think it's going to be a rivalry because soon enough, the Yankees aren't going to be on top. I don't know when that's going to be, but my prediction is that they will start to fall off mainly because they let go of Aaron Judge and free agency. I think that's just a big move. They kind of moved to make Brian Reynolds their franchise player. I just don't think that was a smart move. And then looking at us in this game, here we are on the top of the 16th inning. I mean, just back and forth with no runs. It's 0-0 into the 16th inning. Rafael Devers hard ground ball. Gary Doss up in the 18th inning. Guys on first and second. He strikes out swinging. And then eventually in the 19th inning, we do go to quick manage. And we couldn't score anything in the top half. In the bottom half. The Rays finally get one. 
We just played two full-length games, and we even played in, into the first inning in the third game. 19 innings, and it was one nothing. Just incredible. Wander Franco went three for eight for them. Rafael Devers went two for five for us. We get the loss, and you can just see, you know, what type of team we are turning into here. These close little losses where we just need just a little bit to get us over the top. So I'm thinking here at the trade deadline, we end up actually going on a five-game losing streak, then going on a four-game winning streak. So I don't think we are just totally out of content, uh, out of contention. I just think we need something to put us over the top. I'm not going to make any dramatic move at all. But Victor Robles is on the trade block. It's his time to go here at the trade deadline. I look at who I should trade him to, and I will be realistic here. Trade him to a wild card team who's looking to compete. That's the Padres, Brewers, and Phillies. I think those are the three teams that I'm considering here. And let's just start with the Phillies. You know, looking at their center fielders, they have Randall Grishik, but he's not better than Victor Robles. And then they have a young guy in uh, Simon Miziati, and he is 25 years old. But he is not the starter right now. I think they still need somebody to be that starter. And he's a couple of years younger than Victor Robles. The Brewers have a hole in center field, a big one. They don't have any center fielder right now. And they do have a good plethora of infielders, including Colton Wong, who is hurt right now. But he should be returning soon for their playoff push. They also have an interesting guy here in Tyler Black, who has at least proven that he has been at the MLB level. And I think that this would be a decent trade for both teams. Giving them a center fielder, they do not have a good one right now. You see one of their team needs. A team is seeking a catcher, first baseman, and a center fielder. And they'd be getting a guy that's pretty cheap for them, $3.6 million. And that will be within their budget, barely. So we make that trade work. And we will acquire Tyler Black to add to our middle infield depth. He is young too, so there is no rush to like make him the starter or anything. I just want to add some competition and also a potential for maybe a boom or bust guy that hopefully could be a boom. He has good attributes. One thing I like about him is that he is very good defensively. I think that's one thing that I want to make sure that we are good in the infield with is that middle infield defense. So just before the trade deadline, we end up actually beating the A the Angels, not the A's, the Angels 12 to 10. What a game this was. And look at our charts offensively. Kerry Doss went three for six with two home runs, four RBIs. Devers goes one for four. Aguilar two for five. Tyler Black actually played in this game and he wasn't supposed to because right now I am platooning him and he's only facing right-handed pitching. But he ended up going two for five on his debut. Gets that average up to 292, hitting in that eight hole. And I don't have, like I said, huge lofty expectations, but he's a guy that hopefully maybe surprises some people here. So before getting to the end of the month, we will play the Angels. And Chris Bassett on the mound for the Angels for Tyler Black's debut here for using him. And the first pitch he sees will be popped up to center field that was a good pitch to hit now if he had power that one would have been gone because he barely missed that one and you can just see how our team is doing right now Dom Thompson Williams always hitting in that leadoff spot he's hitting 292 I mean that guy is absolutely killing it it seemed like out of all the trades that we made so far in this series that one has been the best getting Dom Thompson Williams over to the Nashville Stars but here is Devers. He comes up to the plate, and he is just continuing to hit well. He's definitely going for that silver slugger. He's not quite in the MVP conversation, but he is up there with his numbers. He's going to have a career high in slugging percentage and uh, not an average, but he's going to be very, very good in this series. Time for the next 10 years. We move on to the bottom of the second inning. Base is loaded here. Now we're down 2-0. Jorge Alfaro at the plate. He is just getting warmed up as he came back from a two-month injury. And he does draw the walk. It's 2-1. Dom Thompson-Williams comes up to the plate now. One out. Fly ball to left field. This one should be deep enough to score, uh, not carry Doss, but it should be good, deep enough to score the runner from third base, and it does. 
It is now 2-2. Two to two. That was Abdubal Herrera. Bringing up Tyler Black here in the fifth inning now in a 2-2 two to two ball game for his third at bat. This one will just be a ground ball to Trey Turner and will be an easy throw on to first base. And he will be 0 for 3 in his debut. We'll see if he gets another chance to come to the plate here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Now it's a 6-2 to two ball game. There is Kerry Doss. I want to keep an eye on Kerry Doss because, I, like I said, I think that Doss might end up being the star of this team in the future. I think he's got that potential with his bat. He can put fans in the seats. But we do fly out to left field for uh, by James Wood. And that brings in Josh Hader here in the ninth inning, and he will face Tyler Black. He gets one more opportunity here, down by four runs, runners on the corners here, a fastball over the middle. 98 mile an hour will just be a pop-up to left field. And the final out of the game will come by way of the new acquisition, Tyler Black. But I do like what I see from him defensively with his ratings. We'll have to see if he can produce at the plate. I did like his numbers coming over, but we'll see if he does live up to that. And we will see uh, what happens here at the trade deadline. A major move. The Minnesota Twins acquire Cabrian Hayes from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And they make a huge move here. The Twins are 52 and 59. I'm surprised they would make this move because they not only acquired Cabrian Hayes, they moved on from their top prospect and a top five uh, prospect in baseball in Drew Jones. Drew Jones is probably going to be in contention for the number one pick in real life in 2022's MLB draft. And his ratings are pretty good. He is still 19 years old, too. I'm surprised that they would move on from him. For those of you guys who said that Jack Ladder would never be traded, I, I up one. I up you one, I guess I should say. Drew Jones gets traded already in the series. So now we hop into the month of August, just after the trade deadline. And Pablo Moya, a young closer, having an opportunity to close this one out on the road versus the Milwaukee Brewers. Tyler Black's former team. Here's a fly ball to Shea Wickham. That will get Christian Yelich out for the first out here in the ninth inning. Javier Baez at the plate. He hits one hard to Jesus Aguilar, the former Brewer. Two outs. Willie Adama is at the plate now, 0 for 3, and Moya misses his spot. This one's driven deep, but it just hangs up in the air, and we hold on for the victory here, 3 to 2. So a good way to start this uh, month with a nice road win. Pablo Moya has 21 saves on the season also. A pretty good pitcher I see out of Moya. He was our minor leaguer of the year for pitchers in season number one. Victor Robles gets his first start with the Brewers this next game as we are down by one. Here is Shea Wickham at the play here in the ninth inning. Little small ball. That is going to move the runner over to third base here with one out. That brings up Jorge Alfaro, who we signed to a two-year contract extension in the offseason. I really like Jorge because of his strong arm and his speed as a catcher. 0 for 3 in this one. Pitch out on the first pitch. I don't know why you would pitch out. It's 1-0 here with one out. This one will be over the middle. And Jorge Alfaro comes through in the ninth inning with the hit down the right field line. He's got good speed. He will make it to second base. Lorenzo Cain now playing in right field for the Brewers. He is a little older, but Robles in center now. Takes over his spot. And Jorge Alfaro comes through. These are the type of games we will have to win in order to compete here at the end of the season with two months to go. Dom Thompson-Williams gets a pitch right over the middle, and he just absolutely whiffs. That was an excellent pitch to hit. Tyler Black comes to the plate. Now, I'm going to change his batting stance next episode, so you will see him in a different stance. I actually did some research on him. It doesn't quite look like that, but he strikes out as this one heads to extras. Gary Doss to the play here in the top of the 10th inning with a man on first base. He will just ground out into a double play. But now we try to quick manage here, and we do end up losing this game. 
Well, at least we showed some fight there coming back at the end in the ninth. I want to see us kind of complete those games, though. Those comebacks, those are going to be the big wins we need. And we lose 4-3, to three, more close loss games. Pablo Moya, part two. He gets another opportunity here for the save, this time versus the Angels. He's facing Trey Turner, hitting in the cleanup spot. Trey Turner in the cleanup spot for the Angels, and he hits one to left field, and that one will be a single to start the bottom of the ninth inning. Jorge Polanco at the plate here in the five spot, 0 for 3 today. Ground ball to short. This is fielded by Tyler Black. He turns and throws to second. What a play. Getting the lead runner on the backhand. He's got a good arm also, and that's maybe a flash of what we are hoping to see out of Black. Hopefully he can get something at the plate as well. A fly ball will bring two outs to this inning as that brings up Jared Walsh. He is actually pinch hitting in this spot right here, and he will draw the walk. So that will bring up Magnaris Sierra here. Runners on first and second. Two outs, one-two pitch. Moya gets him two. Ground out to Devers, and we end up with the victory. It feels good to be on the other side of these one-run games, and we get... The good road victory here as Tyler Black made a very good play to probably save that game because anytime you get in the MLB The Show, um, Trey Turner on second base, he usually ends up scoring. So we get through the middle part of the month of August. We drop two of three versus Toronto. Then we lose three straight versus Boston. We end up beating New York 10-3. to Pablo Moya in another save opportunity. He gets that one. We end up winning six to five here we play the yankees in the third game of this four game set we end up dropping that one and then troy quincy gets to start in the last game of this four game set and we end up winning 12 to nothing 17 hits to to new york's three i mean that type of victory definitely could give you a lot of hope going forward as we beat the yankees in a four game set and you could just see the yankees the yankees are dipping right now we are still in last, but they are not too far ahead of us. One guy I want to acknowledge as being a very good surprise here this season is Taylor Trammell. This is a guy that I want to keep my eye on. I, I don't know if he's going to be a starter. I just don't know. But I acquired him in season one thinking that he could be a big potential with his bat at the plate. And I think this is what you're starting to see. You're starting to see the maturation of Taylor Trammell at the plate. He's starting to be more patient, and his contact rating was his biggest knock when we traded for him. It's up to a 36 with 33 vision. Even though that's low, that's way better than what he used to be. But you can just see the power on his bat. He has power to all fields. It's not just a pull hitter. And one thing I like about his arm is that it's very accurate coming from the outfield. He's got decent speed. It's at about 69, 70. Not great, but you can just see the power with this swing this one's gone this one's on the road versus lance mccullers on the mound and he absolutely crushes that pitch he even stops the pose a little bit after the swing 111 exit velo that was absolutely crushed we actually end up losing this game on the road but i was very very impressed by taylor Trammell and what he's turning into Maybe we need to give him more of a shot at the MLB level. I think that this is kind of what he can be. He can be a guy that can hit for uh, extra bases pretty well. So he can slug pretty well. But we'll see if he can really stick in the rotation of these outfielders. As we end up losing this one 6-7, to seven, a very close game. One of those, more of those close games. I can't believe it. We keep losing those games. But we end up dropping three uh, to Houston at the end of the schedule but then we get some major news after going on a three game win streak in the last month of August we find out Abdubal Herrera has a fractured shin and will be done for the season Abdubal Herrera is interesting now I don't know what to do because he's signed to a six million dollar deal the last year of his contract we signed him two years ago Hitting actually decent. He was struggling for a little bit this year, but now 
he's coming off of an injury. I mean, if I'm being realistic, it's kind of hard to get a free agent contract coming off of an injury, especially in your 30s. And here we are at 64 and 71. So it looks like Taylor Trammell is going to have to assume the starting left field job for the remainder of this season. And I think that that's going to have to be the move. But looking at how we can make it here to this wild card spot, I think this is doable. I look at the rest of the teams ahead of us. The Red Sox and the Rays and the Astros are the only teams ahead of us that are over 500. Everybody else is under. So we are right there with the rest of everybody. But how can we control those two teams, the Red Sox and the Blue Jays? Well, and the Rays. We play the Rays the last series of the season. We play the Red Sox seven of the next 10 games. So this is going to be interesting. We could possibly make a run here if we beat the right opponents at the right time. It's going to be crucial that timing is everything. John Dumont is at the AAA level. We moved him down at the beginning of this episode, and he just hit the ground running. 45 at-bats, 289. We're going to need all hands on deck here in September. This is a big month. This might be the most important stretch of the series so far. If we want to compete, I think we can do it. I think something has come over this team, and you can just see guys like Taylor Trammell, guys like Abdullah Herrera who were contributing, and they start and their bats started to get hot. Unfortunately, he got injured, but I think more bats can get hot down the stretch. We'll have to see. Let me know what you guys thought of the trade deadline trade. Hopefully, it pays off a little bit. And who do you think is going to get hot here at the end of the season? Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. It's too easy. I've been there, done it, seen it. I saw that. Boy, all that like Kenan. I did that. Still got cracked, they feeling. That's true. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. Yeah. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tino. That's why I gotta ride with the Nino. Outside it's a war going on.